Does playing an instrument make you smarter? Hey, it's Paul Toby here from jazzmental.com. As someone who's played the piano since he was eight years old, I have some experience and insight into this subject that you're gonna to wanna to hear. In fact, I've got six reasons why playing an instrument is a really, really good idea for brain health. And we're gonna dive into that in just a second. Welcome back, Paul Toby here from jazzmental.com. Remember, if you like videos like this, please subscribe to the channel and we'll keep you posted on all the new videos that we're making pretty much all the time. All right, let's dive into the subject of whether playing an instrument makes you smarter or not. And just generally right off the bat, listening to music is a really, really good idea. It definitely stimulates many areas of the brain. But it turns out that scientists and scientific studies have been done that absolutely prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that musician brains are much healthier than the average person. And there's essentially six main reasons for that. And when we get to the end of this too, I'm gonna to give you some insights from my personal experience that can tell you that after playing an instrument for many years, how that's helped me in many areas of my life. Okay, let's get started. Number one, it turns out that musicians have bigger brains. And this is now then associated with number one, a superior working memory. So the reason why musicians have this memory is because they're applying on an ongoing basis this concept of repetition, doing things over and over again and by doing that, it increases all of the connections of the brain with that activity, be it emotional and creative and logical and sometimes even spiritual, I think. And for example, if I'm playing something as simple as a, as a riff, practice that several times over and over again it's going to get a little bit different each time a little bit better each time and my fingers and my brain are connecting on a on a very much higher level and apparently this increases the actual size of the brain and I'll get into that in more in, in just a minute and number two reason why uh, playing an instrument makes you smarter is you have superior auditory skills. I think that sort of goes without saying. Musicians tend to have this ability to hear things a little bit better. And in my life, for example, I learned a new language, in specifically French. I, I grew up as an Anglophone. And then when I moved to Quebec to go to school, I actually had a lot of friends that really only spoke mostly French. So it was either like learn a language or have no friends. And within pretty much a couple of years, I was sort of into it. And I actually ended up marrying a French Canadian, Nancy, and we've been married for 26 years and French is still a part of our lives. But I found that process probably a little bit easier than most people because my brain functions on that level. It tends to hear things. So for example, I'm constantly listening to the way that notes interact with each other. Just something that I wrote a few years back called Caminar and I think really what I'm trying to say is the, the brain hears sound differently than most people because it's analyzing not just the music and the melody, but everything interspersed with that, the way the notes interact with each other, the way the rhythm goes. And so this tends to develop superior auditory skills. 
Number three, cognitive flexibility. The brain's ability to do many different things. So for example, in my life, I have applied my focus and energy and creativity and logic to business, to golf, to boating, to uh, obviously music, to teaching, to training, to public speaking. Everything that I do in my life tends to be from a focus, a focused perspective of not only creativity, but an, an analysis of that that is seemingly natural for me. Now, try to remember, I'm not saying any of this to impress you, I'm saying to impress upon you that I believe that learning music from an early age and continuing that throughout my life has helped me be more flexible in my thinking. And cognitive flexibility is something that was referred to in a lot of studies. And for example, uh, orchestration is the ability to hear what different musical instruments do, like an, an orchestra, and be able to put them together to make an overall sound as a composer and as an arranger. And I think the word arranger means the brain has the ability to arrange things in a real and meaningful and creative and logical manner. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, also, according to these studies, this is number four, uh, the areas of the brain that are responsible for motor control are much larger. So motor control obviously being that connection between how the brain processes and how it comes out in the things in, in coordination and motor control. For example, um, the fingers working in tandem, even if you're doing scales. Obviously, just a simple hand and exercise, but the, the fingers still need to process that and the brain needs to hear it and the two connected together comes out in some type of pattern because everything in life is a pattern and a, a method. And that's why uh, when I run my training company, it's all about repetition and patterns and understanding from the inside out. And especially when you're training people on music over at jazzmental.com, it's about understanding music from the inside out. That's jazz. It's like understanding chords and scales and rhythm and how they all fit together. Okay, so I think that one alone, if you want your children to be more capable with their motor functions, get them started in music because it really helps. All right, number five. I love this one spatial coordination so the areas of the brain that are responsible for spatial coordination are quite a bit larger what is that it means how things are placed not just on the piano or any instrument but how things are placed in a room on a desk uh, if you've seen anything or if you know me my house is fairly tidy and uniform and uh, in its place. Everything seems to have a place. Now it's not obsessive compulsiveness, it's just my brain works in such a way that it likes to have an order. Just like the piano has an order. If, if you look at the 88 keys, there's black ones, there's white ones, but there's a specific order to them. And how do the fingers process that order and how does the brain process that order? That's spatial coordination. Uh, this can be applied to structural engineers who uh, are responsible for building spaces and understanding how structure works. It's also for room designers and people like that. So music can really help you a lot in those areas. Okay, so spatial coordination. Try to remember that one. That's a really good one. And finally, number six is musicians have a much larger corpus callosum. I don't, I don't even know if I'm saying that properly because honestly I, I've only heard it recently for the first time but what is that a corpus callosum it is the connection between the 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 fibers 
that make the connection between the left brain and the right brain. And this is the part that I think is really interesting. So the left brain is responsible for logic. It's the arithmetic side of, of music. It's the arithmetic side of, of business, of numbers, of finance and whatever. And as someone who's been in business now for many years as an entrepreneur, it's been very helpful to understand obviously cash flow and, and the way that money comes and goes and you know the whole finance of business but also all the other numbers associated with that so that's the logical side of the brain but then the creative side of the brain which is the right side of the brain is the part that has the most emotion and puts uh, feeling and effort and a spiritual belief system into everything and the connection between those two as, as it goes back and forth, apparently the corpus callosum is the nerves that transfer information between the left and the right brain. So the brain goes, okay, logically, this is the way things work together. And the right brain goes, yeah, that's great, but does that actually sound good? For example, the left brain would say, uh, church and harmony is great. And then the right brain goes, oh, that's where it comes from, and that makes sense because it's all in thirds. But then it goes, how do you make that more creative? By spacing the notes out. And it just makes things sound better. Chordal voicings. Putting that simple, logical chord together in a way that makes creative sense. That's what the corpus callosum is for. It's that communication between the left brain and the right brain. Okay, so I promised you I'd give you a little bit of insight into how this has helped me in my life. And the insight is everything. I can tell you that I may not be smarter than the average person, but I certainly feel confident about my cognitive ability to work through not just problems, but also uh, from a creative standpoint and just it's uh, impacted pretty much every area of my life my, my feeling has always been if i can play music i can pretty much do anything and i think that's the way you want your kids to think thanks for spending a little time with me it's paul toby this is a fairly new youtube channel and we'd be really grateful if you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so we'll be adding about five videos a week just like this one the videos are mainly focused on technical skills development, recording tips, and even professional and business development for musicians like you who want some help from a professional musician like myself. So I've toured 17 different countries, made eight albums, was signed to a really good label, and made a full-time living as a professional artist. So I know and I'm confident that I can be a great resource for you. Subscribe now and I'll see you in another video.